Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. Real quick, before I get into this video, I want to tell you about PopCultureZone.com. They are a website specializing in comic books, some of the hottest variants, and CGC comics. You can get raw comics. They specialize in lots of 10. And for those raw comics, if you are shipping to the domestic United States, you only pay $4.99 flat rate shipping. They also specialize in CGC pre-orders. And another great thing, they have no sales tax unless you live in New Jersey. Sorry guys, forget about it. But no sales tax, lots of 10, CGC Comics, popculturezone.com. Now on to the video. going on guys it's brown with men's comics back again to give you my picks for comic books that are hitting final order cut off this coming monday night once again sunday night for dc comics but it's another light week for foc at least in my opinion although light there are still some great books we're gonna jump right into it starting with image we get spawn number 319 this week this issue is being solicited as a great jumping on point for those that might not be fans of Spawn. And it also plants the seed for going into Spawn's universe and those other Spawn titles. As always, you got that great regular cover. You also got that Francesco Matina, and there is a Todd McFarlane cover C as well. Also from Image Comics, we get Two Moons number five. This is another one each issue that comes out. I've been putting it on my FOC list. Love this book. As I mentioned before, big fan of horror comics, big fan of history. This takes Civil War and horror, mashes them together in a great series. Five issues in, still look forward to picking this up every month. If you haven't been reading this, this is one of those titles that I like to recommend you do. And if you have been reading it, let me know in the comments what you've been thinking. I think this one is a sleeper book. I think a lot of people just haven't been picking it up yet. And I really hope people do pick it up because it's such a great story. Been loving every issue. And I'm gonna to continue to pick it up with issue number five. Sticking with the image once again, we get crossover number seven. Haven't talked about this title in a while. It is a great series, but I like issue number seven because we don't have Donnie Cates writing this. We have Chip Zdarsky writing this. And I'm a huge fan of Chip Zdarsky. Still one of the best Daredevil runs that's out there is that current run from Chip Zdarsky, plus all those other great titles that Chip has written in the past from Image Comics, let alone. But here we are taking over writing duties and that cover eight's even got, like, it's a Chip Zdarsky cover. Not only is it a Chip Zdarsky cover, but it's got Chip Zdarsky on the cover. So I'm in on this one and it's important to note that there are some incentive variants for this. It's got a one in 10, it's got a one in 25 and it's got a one in 50 incentive variant. Image is coming back big with some of these incentives, especially in these later issues. Usually you see it, you know, maybe issue one, but here we have issue number seven. It's nice to see some incentives. And I'm super excited about Chip Zdarsky writing this issue. Also one other book from Image Comics, don't need to really mention it this much because everyone's well aware of this title, but they might not know the issues coming up for Final Word Cutoff. And we get Department of Truth number 10, hitting FOC this Monday. No incentive variance on this one, but it doesn't have a cover A, cover B, and cover C. So pick the cover you like, or as I like to say, just go Pokemon style and collect them all. Getting over to Marvel Comics. I actually only have one book for Marvel this week. Yes, there's a bunch of other great titles. A lot of people are liking that new Captain America. But me, I am sticking with the one book, and that is Star Wars High Republic number six. Everything is crazy good about Star Wars right now. High Republic's great. I'm still more of a fan favorite of the IDW Star Wars Adventures High Republic, but love this series nonetheless. Issue number six does have cover A, cover B. Love the Rancor on cover A, one of my favorite, favorite creatures in all the Star Wars universe. And the reference in the movie Pineapple Express. I don't want to go near this guy. Okay. Yeah. What's down there? Right there. Fucking Rancor? But, yeah, he's getting, getting ready to get thrown into that hole. <laughs> he's like, what's down there, a rancor? A lot of people that went over their heads, but I thought it was funny as hell. Either way, there's also a 1 in 25 incentive variant for this, and it is done by fan favorite artist, Peach Momoko. 
So you got hot R's there. Hot series with Star Wars. And again, issue number six. Whenever I see incentives for those later issues, I like to pick those up. So that's something to definitely be aware of, especially for Peach Momoko fans. And just a late addition, I do want to make people aware of. I mentioned it briefly. We do get United States of Captain America, issue number one. This is going to be a five-issue miniseries. There's also been big news this week that as you get into issue number four, they're going to introduce a female Filipino Captain America. As you have Steve Rogers and Sam Wilson, the two Captain Americas we know, the shield has been stolen. They go out searching for it, and during that search, they find a bunch of other Captain Americas along their way. Five issue miniseries. Each one seems to be showcasing a new Captain America, which is great because this is a great way for Marvel to introduce possible new characters along the way. So pick it up for the read, stash away for the collectible in case some of these characters show up later on or get a new life of their own. That's what's great about comic books. So late edition, wanted to add this in there. From Boom Studios, we get Power Rangers Unlimited, Edge of Darkness number one. This is actually written by Mighty Morphin Power Ranger fan, not even fan, hardcore fan. One of his dreams all along with comic books is to write a Power Ranger book, and here he's doing it with friend of the channel, Frank Gogol. You might know him from Dead End Kids, No Heroin, Ringo Award winner, but getting his dream, writing Mighty Morphin Power Ranger, and in this we get the first full appearance of the Phantom Ranger. Big fans of Power Ranger comic books, on this channel. I've been vocal, not the biggest fan of that 90s show, but I have absolutely loved the comic book series, whether it was Kyle Higgins, Ryan Parrott, the other authors, and Frank Ogles getting his shot. I can't wait to see what he does with this and definitely getting this for FOC. And then I have one book from DC. It's actually a hardcover, not a single issue, but this is one where a lot of people were loving the single issues on this, and we are getting that hardcover edition of The Last God. This is a great opportunity, if you didn't pick up those floppies, to pick up the hardcover edition, get issues 1 through 12 in one single digestible volume. This is the way I love to read stories like this. Fantastic story, but what I love the most is the artwork in here. Yes, the story is great, but the art brings that story to life, and the art is by Ricardo Federici, who's been doing all those banger 1 in 25 DC variants right now. Has done a lot of great covers, but here you get to see his art really shine throughout the interiors as well. Last God, hardcover, $49.99. Again, that's why I stress pre-orders before FOC, because a lot of places might offer a discount. Which is going to bring us into the indie showcase portion of this video. Once again, this is brought to you by Black Cape Comics. Huge fans of indie comics like myself. You can pre-order all the books discussed in this video as well as the Indie Showcase books from Black Cape Comics at blackcapecomics.com. First book I want to talk about is from Dark Horse. Talked a few weeks ago about Cullen Bunn with his new hit, Basilisk. Said it reminded me of something that's killing the children. That book has just released this past week. A lot of people out there are starting to get that same vibe. Great to hear. But Cullen Bunn is coming back with this Dark Horse book in Parasomnia number one. This is also a four issue miniseries. Love Cullen Bunn, one of the best horror comic writers out there right now. And love that he spreads his love across all these great publishers. This series takes place between two worlds. A man's son goes missing and he goes searching for him in a nightmarish dreamscape and takes on a ruthless cult in the process. I see two regular price cover for this, for these. A lot of times when you're going with indie books, it's nice to pick up that cover A, but I really, really love the cover B on this issue. It's by none other than another great artist with Raphael Albuquerque. So most likely I'm picking up cover B for this one. And then from Vault Comics, we get Barbaric number one. Vault Comic has been putting out some bangers lately, and this is one that I am super excited to read. It's by Michael Morrissey, one of my favorite authors of one of my favorite Vault titles with Wasted Space. He's also written some of those IDW Star Wars Adventures books. But here we get a barbarian cursed to do good with the rest of his life. But he hates witches, and things just kind of seem to go chaotic from there and promises a bunch of violence. And how can someone who's supposed to be so good be so violent? We're gonna find out because they're promising effing chaos. 
No kidding, that's in the solicit. It's barbaric. Cover A looks fantastic. There's also a great Conan homage. I'm having a hard time picking which cover I like. I like all of them. There's also gonna be a polybag cover, so who knows what we're gonna get out of that. Either way, barbaric number one from Vault Comics. I'm excited about this one and pre-ordering it for FOC. And then the last one I'm talking about in the indie showcase is definitely no stranger to Simple Man's Comics. Been talking about this since volume one, issue one, but we got more Kanto, one of the favorite, favorite, favorite characters and favorite creators in Simple Man's Comics. David Booer, Drew Zucker, love those guys to the greatest guys within comics and they keep putting out great, great titles with Kanto. I will say it like I've said it every time, if you have not been reading Kanto, you are missing out. The trade paperback for volume two just came out. You can get a copy of that right now. While you're at it, if you haven't read it at all, pick up volume one, pick up volume two. I promise you, I can promise you that you will like it. I have not met hardly anyone that hasn't and it's being picked up for an animated movie, but I digress. Here we get Kanto City of Giants, number three. Got that great cover A, got that great one in 10 incentive and another issue into that great Kanto verse. Seven seasons in a movie. We are working on the seven seasons. We got that movie coming. Go Kanto. That wraps up the any showcase for this week. But like I always talk about at the end of this video, we do have some late or additional printings heading final order cutoff as well. And from Image Comics, we get Made in Korea, number one, getting a second print. One of the big things for additional printings this week, just as they did with the previous issues, we're getting Walking Dead, issues number seven through 12, getting second prints, but not just any second prints. We're getting that David Finch goodness again. And they also have those one in 25 incentive, second prints, the black and white versions. I see these being just as popular and they are people that want to go Pokemon style and want to collect them all. Some great artwork of great characters. If you're a fan of Walking Dead, the comic book, the show, the universe, this is definitely something you want to pay attention to and get those pre-orders in because people that slept on the first ones, they aren't going to sleep on the second ones. I see these being a little bit harder to get a hold of. Then we have a few comics from Aftershock getting additional printings. We get Maniac of New York number two getting a second print. We get We Live number one getting a fourth print and We Live number five getting a third print. And then lastly from Boom Studios, as I mentioned earlier in this video, just this past week, Basilisk number one came out, had such a great release. We are having issue number one coming with a second print. Not to mention Boom Studios just this past week announced that they have some web exclusive variants that they put up on their site. And a lot of them sold out within minutes. One of those being an exclusive Basilisk number one variant limited to under 300 copies, sold out within minutes. There was also a Berserker number one exclusive rant, as well as a Magic the Gathering number one. But if you didn't get your hands on any of those, not to fret, I will be doing a giveaway shortly on this channel, giving away all three of those variants. So make sure you stay tuned. And if you aren't already, please consider subscribing. Click that bell so you get notified when those videos drop. But there it is, guys. My picks for Final Word Cutoff for this week. This is Brown with Seven Minutes Comics. I'll see you guys in the next video. I'm on no pizza. I'm gonna buy no pizza. Yeah, I ate those they live for. Get it up. Talking on my back, go figure. Yeah. Whole team eats for spit up. Never was the one to go flicker. No face, no case, no picture. For place, big steaks, my dinner.